Hey, Zachary. Hey. How you doing today? Good. Okay, you just gave me a um, powerful thought that uh, the Lord gave you uh, today, and I want to share with my Facebook friends, so do you mind telling me again? Yeah. Well, um, earlier today when my brother was putting my baby sister to sleep, um, he was he told my mom when he thought she was sleepy, he said, yeah, I put her to sleep, she's down now, and my mom said, keep on going, she's not there yet. Which gave me a thought. Keeping the Holy Ghost and well, receiving and keeping the Holy Ghost is like putting the baby to sleep. Okay. I mean, like you when you when you really want the Holy Ghost, when you like desperate to get the Holy Ghost, you could you'll pray every day, you make uh, you'll come up with a Bible routine for you to stay in the word, you will go to church, you will get advice from, you know, the authority of church and stuff. But then when you receive the Holy Ghost, some people they'll stop. Mm-hmm. And like, like a baby, if you stop the baby, like when she's fall asleep, if you just stop when she fall asleep, mm -hmm. you disrupt that peace that she had, that to put her in sleep mode, uh, make her want to go to sleep, you'll disrupt that peace and she'll wake up again. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the flesh. If you, you put this, now uh, the Bible says, Jesus. Mortify, the Bible says mortify, uh, mortify the flesh. Yeah. But. Yeah, so when you go feel the Holy Ghost, you mortify the flesh. Mm -hmm. But if you stop and you don't keep on with the routines and you don't keep on with what needs to be done, what you got to receive the Holy Ghost, then the flesh will wake it back up again. So that's why you need to stay stirred up because if you don't, if you don't stir up, the flesh will wake up. Oh, my God, Zachary. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> if you don't stir up, then the flesh won't wake up. The flesh will wake up. The flesh will wake up. Jesus. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That's powerful, Zachary. I got you. I got you. If you don't keep yourself stirred up, the flesh will wake yeah. up. Whoa. That's amazing. And I love that analogy. You know, when we're putting Miracle to sleep, and um, if you put it down as soon as she gets still, if, as soon as she, she feel that uh, crib, she going to get right back up, right back up. And so let me just make sure I'm understanding what you're saying, okay? So in other words, you said re uh, receiving and keeping the Holy Ghost is like putting a baby to sleep. So in other words, um, like a baby, if you put it down too soon, she'll wake up because that sleep would be disturbed that uh that had her in that peace mode to go to sleep so you got to give a time to settle into it and so in order for us to get established and settle into the holy ghost we got to keep doing those things that we did to keep the holy ghost like reading things you said praying fasting going to church following authority uh in the church am i am i following you okay so um that that's that, that's a great 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 analogy uh that you use if you could say uh, one more thing about the subject, what would it be? For, like, for to anyone, I have to say, don't stop. Because if you stop, like I said, if you don't stir up, then the flesh will wake up. If you stop what you're doing, the devil could get to you just like that. Mm -hmm. Which means you just wasted your whole, you just wasted all the time that you spent on getting the Holy Ghost just to lose it like that. Mm -hmm. And... The, like God, He wants to use you from birth, uh, from birth to death. Mm -hmm. That's how God. That's how He used Jesus. So that's how He wanted to use every. That's He wanted to use everyone like that. Mm -hmm. For when you uh, from the day you were born to the day you die, Jesus. God wants to use you. Mm -hmm. And it and you don't have to be Holy Ghost through that, but throughout your life, He wants to use you in ways that He only could. Yes. And if you stop, God can't use you. He can't use you. God can't use knowing that won't let him. That's right. You know, I was thinking about a song that you uh that we sang at Manor and it say, Came over here to stay, Lord, until, until I, I die. die. It say, Lord, help me until I die. So you got a really purpose in your heart to stay over here until you die. And then um, something else that came to me while you were talking is a scripture uh that says, Be faithful unto death. And so God, he, he loves faithfulness and he want us to be faithful until we die. So say something to the youth. How old are you? Um, I'll be 14 in March. You'll be 14 next month. So if you could say something to the youth before we, uh, close out, what would you say? 
mainly like just with the subject in and out of the subject don't be ashamed of who you are and because like I know a lot of people we want to be like a lot of kids in the church we want to be like the world we see the world they got their cool haircuts where they got to nap it up and all die they got all these cool things that they can ride around and cool things cool phones and all the music they listen to but really it's not worth it Mm-hmm. And be honest, God can use you more than he can use an adult as a kid. It doesn't matter if you're 14 years old, 2 years old, 18-year-old, mm-hmm. 7-year-old. It doesn't matter. God can use you. Mm-hmm. Don't be ashamed of the way that your parents are sending you because they're just doing what the Bible says. In Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, for when he is old, he will not depart, in, uh, depart from it. Amen. So basically, that's I gotta say. Just like you can't be ashamed of it. This is what's making you. This is your calling. God is God's trying to use you, mm-hmm. and you can't be ashamed of God. Because if you'll be, if you're gonna be ashamed of God, then God will be ashamed of you. That's what the Bible say. And through experience, when people like people young and old, when they they'll stay, they'll be saved, and when they leave, their life will mess up. Mm-hmm. It will tear them apart. Because they left, they were ashamed of God, so God became ashamed of them. Mm-hmm. As in the Bible, um, in the Bible, Matthew says, "Not everyone that says Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom, Jesus. but the ones who do the work of my Father." Which mm. I'm paraphrasing. I don't think mm-hmm. that's how you actually say it, but like in Matthew, but that's how I get what Matthew. you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can't just be, you can't be ashamed. Mm-hmm. And same thing with the adults, you can't be ashamed to teach your kids mm-hmm. what is right. And I know some kids are rebellion because I know I've had my years that I was being rebellion. Mm-hmm. But you have to stay on it. And you have to stay on it for you because if you're not going to do it, they're not going to do it. <laughs> That's right. So if I if I told you just do what I say and don't do what I do, chances are that's not gonna happen, right? Mm-hmm. So I need to do what I expect for you to do in order to get the results that I want, right? Mm-hmm. I appreciate you, Zachary, and I'm so grateful for uh, um the thought that the Lord gave you, and I'm your mom, but you teach me in a lot of ways too. So I want to tell you, thank you. You're